Hello everyone, welcome to my session again and thank you so much for your previous session, your support that you showed and I'm really glad that few of you, in fact many of you, found that useful. That's given me more motivation to come with new sessions and to help you all. So let's not try to waste any time and let's get right into it, onto it, not into it. So this session is going to be about Power BI, right, as we talked previously. And by the way, Data Dialog is my blog that I'm trying to create, which uh, will help me send you newsletters every week with amazing articles, with knowledge material, with uh, some training and resource material. So you can always look through it. You can learn a lot from that. And I hope it will help you. So if you want to receive such newsletters, please comment in the comment section below and subscribe, uh, subscribes, subscribe on my website. Yeah, it happens to me all the time whenever I'm live. All right, so let's start. So today we are going to have a dialogue about Power BI. Ignore this, uh, my video taking some fear of BI. So we'll talk about Power BI in general, what Power BI is, how it's so useful, how you can get data into it, manipulate it, and also we'll do a small project. Before that, I want to know how many of you guys were there in the previous session, so I take this session forward accordingly. There are some concepts that I want to brush again, so uh, we can probably have a very strong foundation of data analysis. So I'll just do a recap real quick, right? So what we studied in the last session, what we talked about in the last session, I'll just talk about relevant pieces. So what is a data analysis process? It's basically, you, it's just a systematic process where you extract the data, where you then in the end try to present the, present the insights. So how do we go about this? We first try to define goals and objectives. Then we collect the data from different sources. It could be databases, data warehouses, your local system, servers, uh, Facebook uh, engagement analytics, anything at all. Then we prepare and cleanse that data. Then we identify trends and patterns, maybe over time, across categories, across different regions, etc. Then we try to interpret that and we try to visualize that and report on that. And then there's always feedback and continuous improvement. So once you implement what you have recommended and what you've learned, then you look at the results of those implementation implementations and then you try to optimize that so it's just an evergreening process you always keep learning you always keep improving your processes your analysis and try to get the most out of your insights right so today we'll be focusing most on the fifth part which is interpret and report but also we'll be uh, talking about uh, preparation and cleansing and cleansing and identifying trends and patterns we also talked about types of data analysis so you have descriptive which defines the what of anything, what has happened, in what period, in what range, for example. Then this diagnostic in which you talk about why that something has happened in that period or that region. Then this predictive in which we try to use historical data to determine or try to forecast the future trends. And prescriptive is when we recommend strategies and actions based on all these three previous steps. So today, what we'll do is only descriptive. All right, so without wasting any time, let's start with Power BI. So what is Power BI? And well, I don't need to explain what is Power BI. It's basically a BI tool in which you visualize the data. You can use that for storytelling. And the best thing about Power BI is it can be used as a data transformation and data cleansing tool as well. So you don't have to run Python scripts on the side. So it's always good to do that. but you, you have everything built in Power BI. So first I want you guys to go, if you can right now, you just have to type download Power BI. And you go to this. So whenever I, whenever I left click, you will see green. Whenever I right click, you will see blue, all right? So just for your reference. Then you go to download, advanced download options. Or in fact, just go to downloads, doesn't matter. Are you kidding me? It shouldn't be, uh, never mind. Yeah, advanced download options, click on download, and then you select, if you have 64 bit windows, you select 64. If you have 32 bits, select 30, uh, Select this one. 
So once you're done downloading, and let's assume that you have downloaded that, you don't need to do it right now. Now I'd like you to focus on what I'm going to say and what I'm going to walk you through. Later, you'll have this recording. You can always come to my profile. You'll always have this recording. I'll give you the data sets, the material, and then you can replicate or even improve what we'll do today. So please focus on the session, and later you can uh, redo, it, redo this exercise. So let's start with Power BI. Let's say I have downloaded that, and now I've opened it. All right. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go to, let's say, where is it? Yeah. So this, you see this in home, you see different options, right? So we'll talk one by one only about the relevant ones right now. So you first, what you need to do is, now your Power BI open, it has nothing. It's just empty, you can see. There's nothing over here. Why? There's no data. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get data. So you can either click on this, and you can see all the data sources that you have. You have Excel workbook, you have data flows, you have SQL servers, it could be web-based, or you can click on more, and there are so many more options, which you'll be surprised to see if it loads on time. Yeah. You see, there are so many options that and that, that's why I really like Power BI. So if you have a Microsoft suite, if you have Azure SQL database, Azure Synapse, it can directly connect to that. And similarly, if you have any Microsoft like SharePoint or even uh, Teams, Teams, I'm not sure about Teams, but so you can see all these options over here, which Microsoft provides to you in Power BI to connect your data directly. In our case right now, we'll only use Excel workbook. So what we'll do is we'll go and I'll use this data. European Sales Organization. I will open it, load, let it connect now. See, now you'll see if you have so many different options here, right? We have so many. Uh, so you, you can see there's a difference in this, how this icon looks and how this icon looks. So if you know in, in on Excel sheet, you have two options. You have a worksheet at the bottom of the Excel sheet. And then within that worksheet, you can create a table. So these ones over here, they are tables. It's because in the data set, I already have created tables. And if you were to go with the entire sheet, this is that sheet. So since I have created tables in, in, in on Excel, you can just press Control A, Control T on Excel. That will create a table. So I'll select these four. Now, there's two things you can do over here. In fact, three, but you don't want to cancel, of course. You can load, or you can transform. So when you load, the data comes on Power BI, you can see it over here. You can see it in this uh, table pane. You can see this in, uh, in data model pane. But first, we want to transform the data because we talked about data collection and data transformation, which is cleansing and all of that. So I click on Transform Data. It will open a new window. This is, wait, it opened on the wrong screen. Yeah. Now, this is the powerhouse of Power BI. It's query editor, it's Power Query, and we call it Query Editor. It's also there in Excel, it's not as advanced, but even in Excel, Power Query is the best thing that Excel has. So you can see now we loaded these four tables, right? Now we'll call them tables. Now, what's a table? Table is basically composed of rows and columns. This is a row. And mind you, you might think that these are so basic concepts, but I am keeping in mind that some of you have never been introduced to data before. So that's why I'll try to explain as simply as I can. So if someone's getting bored, I'm not sorry. So this horizontal lines that you see, these are rows. We also call them records. These vertical ones, we call them columns or attributes or fields, right? And this and, and combination of columns and rows is a table. So now we have these four tables. So how I like to start is I like to rename them. So you just double click. I do it for my E. So I just I, I just want to make it simple. So this customers, then this this products. I double click again. Then there's the regions, and then this sales. That's how I like to start. And then what I like to do is I like to understand the data. So. I want to see what, what's in customer. So I have customer index. I'll explain to you what that is. I have customer names, I have emails, and I have head office index. In customer names, I can see these are not names of people, right? These are companies. So I know that this data is about B2B, business to business. It's not B2C or D2C. So we're talking about sales 
that companies are basically making through whatever uh, industry this might be or whatever company this might be. So it's B2B business. We have head office index, we have customer index. Now this customer index is a unique number. It's a unique identifier that identifies each customer or each B2B customer, each business by this. So if I say one, for one, I can only have this keys, keys, keys company and nothing else. For three, I can only have a send limited and nothing else. So these numbers are unique, which means they will not have any duplicates. This cannot have any nulls and this cannot have any different format as well. So they'll all be numbers. They'll all be, uh, actually it can have different formats, but just ignore the last point. So they have to be unique. So that that's what we see unique identifier, right? Then let's see what do we have in product. So in products table, we have again index, which is unique for each and every product. Now in this case, even if we didn't have the index, you see each name is unique, but they could have been a case where the product names were the same. And then there was something else about that product that was different. Let's say the product size was different. Uh, so let's say you're talking about protein shake, right? This company is the same, flavor is the same, everything is the same. Size is different. So in that case, it could have been uh, it, they could have been duplicates in this in this uh, column right here. So that's why we have index, which makes sure that we have unique values. Why do we unique need unique values? We'll talk about that later as well. And just by the way, I want deep dive in data base concepts and data modeling concepts because that's a whole new domain which we'll talk in in future sessions. I'm only trying to explain to you things which are relevant to Power BI. And also as a general, uh, we can extrapolate these concepts later when you talk about databases. Then we have regions. Again, we have index, which is unique identifier. You can't have one for any other city or country other than London and UK. And then you have full name as well, which is London, comma, UK. So we have just combined the, the city, comma, country over here. Then we have sales table. In sales, we have order number. This again is unique. Why unique? Because you can only have one transaction per, not per person, but you can you can only have a unique transaction number per transaction. You can't have S O double triple zero one zero one for two transactions because there's always a different transaction, and that's how your POS system works. POS systems are basically point of sale systems that you might have even online or when you're going to a brick and mortar store, you buy something. There's a POS system right where they punch your card, where they just type all that stuff. So it generates an order. That order is called a transaction ID or order number. It's always unique. It can never be duplicate. Then we have order date. We have customer name index. Now you might think of something, right? This might remind you of something. It's the customer table. So now, for example, what it's saying is that this order, order S000103 was purchased by a customer whose unique ID is eight over here. So now we'll go to customer table. If you look at this eight, we know that it's, I really don't know how to read this. It's just M -E or whatever code, right? So this is that customer that you're talking about who made this purchase over here. So now it knows who that person is, but how will it know? It will look it up in this customer's table. Similarly, we have delivery region index. So if you look at one, we talked about one is what, London, UK. So if you go to regions, you can see one is London, UK. So we know that the delivery region for this order made by a person whose ID is 151, they have asked to deliver that to London in, in the UK. Similarly, we have product description index. You can see product ID 12. Now what was product ID 12? It's called product 12. Now I've just given generic names. It could have been any product like ice cream, mangoes, Bananas, I took two fruits names, but yeah, maybe I'm hungry. Sorry about this, I'll hide this. So, and then you have warehouse code, you have currency code, you have channels. So you have in channels, you have export, you have uh, wholesale, you have distributor. I'll just show you something here. You click on this drop down, you see list may be incomplete. Now you load more and you can see it still is USD. Sometimes what happens is when you load data sets, which are hundreds of thousands of rows, right? You can't see all of those here in this in this drop down. For example, in this drop down, 
you can see only a limited number. If you want to see all of them, well, it's just not possible in the Power BI. It only shows you top thousand values, or it shows you profiling based on top thousand values. Then you have we talked about these two. Then you have order quality quantity. You have unit price. So how many products were ordered in that particular transaction? So you might have ordered five chocolate bars, and each chocolate bar would cost nineteen sixty three dollars. That's a bad example. So it should be PS five, let's say. And then line total. Line total, as you can see, is basically a product of these two. So this is revenue. So it's order quantity multiplied by unit price, unit price per per, per, per quantity. So it would be 9863 into 5, which gives you 9800. And then total unit cost, it's basically what's that unit costing you. So we can use this data to you know, uh, uh, get the profit and all of that. So now what we'd like to do ideally is see if we need to make any changes over here, right? So this order number, it, the column name looks fine. The data type now, what is this over here? This is data type. Now you have different types of data types. You have string, which is called text. In this case, you can see this is a combination of text and numbers. So we can't call it numbers. It has to be text. That's how uh, Power BI or any engine in, in SQL or Python, they take it as, so if it's alphanumeric, they'll take it as text. Then with order date, you can see over here, we have different type of data for data, data types. So you can see date, time, date. So in this case, it's date because we have date. Well, date time would be if you also had time, let's say the exact time of that order, which we don't have in this case. You have whole numbers, you have percentages, you have fixed decimal numbers, that's for currencies. And then you have decimal numbers. You, you can also have true, false, or binary, which is just one and zero. We also call them Boolean. So this seems fine. This also seems fine. It's also uh, one, two, three, which is whole number. And just by the way, when you load data into Power BI, it tries to automatically detect the types as you can see over here, right? It tries to do that, but sometimes it could be wrong. So that's why it's always nice to verify it. Channel is text, seems fine. Currency is USD, it's text, seems fine. This is alphanumeric, again, text. Now these would be numbers. Order quantity is also number. It can't be 5.5. You can't order 5.5 uh, mobile phones or pens. Unit price. Now that's decimal. Why? Because of course unit price could be in decimals. For example, you buy uh, one a piece of bread or a loaf of bread. It could be 1.5 dollars. Line total again, since it's uh, it's uh, you're multiplying a decimal with a whole number. It also needs to be a decimal or a fraction. Similarly, same goes for total unit cost. Now, this all looks fine to me. Let's check that in these tables as well. Okay, this is whole number, fine. Text, text, number, all right. I'll get back to this. I need to talk, I need to explain one more thing. Again, index, product, these both seem fine to me. For region, index seems fine. City seems fine. It's ABC, country, fine. And full name is also fine. Amazing. So in customers, you see this head office index. But in this table over here, there was no information about head office, or we don't have a head office table. So in this case, we don't have it. It means we don't need it. So what I'll do is I'll click on this. I'll just remove the column. And it's gone. Amazing. And now let's just try to run some transformations, even though we don't need any transformations in this, but I'll just do for you to understand. So let's say, in this case, you want to call it by abbreviation. So you don't want entire export or wholesale or distribute, we just want EXP. So you click on replace values, right? And then you say distributor replace with test. You click on OK. And you see you have changes. You can you can just see it. And also a easier way is to just click on that one particular value, click on replace value, it will automatically show. So let's say I want it X W X O L for for uh, letters only and then for export i want pxpo right so you can see here and you can also see while you're making these changes on the right side in the applied steps you can see all these changes are showing over here so this is the amazing thing about one of the most amazing things about power query or query editor that you can always roll back you can always delete or you can go back to it and you can change it so for example, this is when we had no changes. Then we replaced distributor with this, you can see over here. Then we replaced wholesale with whole, you can see over here. 
And similarly, we did for export. You can see over here. If I want to delete them, I can simply just delete it from here, right? Now you can also delete any columns you want to. For example, let's say I want to delete this. I want to delete, let's say, for example, currency code, and I want to delete this as well. Now you see, even though I did three different steps, it's all done in one step. And this you see over here, this thing we call M code. So I don't expect you to learn this, even I'm not so good at it, but just for, you, for your knowledge, this is called M code. So if you were to, let's say, if you want to delete anything else over here, you can just, let's say, if you want to delete channel, you can just update over here until you see and see. Channel would be deleted once you're done. See, it's gone. It was here, right? So it's just nice to know basics of M code or just to, even if you try to read this, you'll understand very easily. So this first, it's it's same table. That's what comes most of the time before uh, any any at the start of any code. Then remove columns. That's what we are doing in this step. This hash and this change type is always the previous step. So why does it this is so that it knows it always keeps that in order. So first you change the type. Then you're going to remove the columns. If we did not have change type over here. Power BI would not know which column to, you know, which step to uh, uh, execute first. You can see change type was the previous step. That's what we have over here. And then now we're removing these columns. So you, if you want to edit this, you can edit this as well, or you could just go on this interface and delete anything you want. to. Now that we did it four times, they should have been four steps. That it doesn't work this way. So if the step is of the same kind, it will do that in the same one single step. Right, only one entry will be created here, which I think is good. Otherwise, what would have would happen is if you don't follow this, let's say first I I just rename this, right? And then I delete this column. And then I rename, uh, then I change the data type of this. And then I delete this column. Now it's showing me in different steps, remove and remove, which I'm not really a fan of. So now instead of one, it's showing me three different steps. So what I always like to do is if I have to remove any columns, I do that in one step. If I have to change the type, I do that in one step. If I have to rename the columns, I do that in one step. So it becomes really easy for me to navigate on, on this right-hand side. Also, you can always double, uh, you can always right-click on this. You can rename this as well. So I'll say I remove index columns. This is easy for you, or it's, it's a nice practice because it's not necessary that only you will work on this Power BI report. It could be anyone. It could be a teammate, or you might leave the company. You might hand over it to someone else when you're going on leaves. So it's very important to keep a very good record of what you're doing. So it's very easy for anyone to understand. Just like programmers do when they're coding, there's good coding and then there's bad coding. Similarly, we have good practice and we have bad practice. Sometimes you might see 100 steps over here, which is so annoying because you have to go through each and every step and see what had happened. So just try to keep this practice whenever you are doing this work. All right, let's roll back to the uh, So you can see in change type, you can see M code has created that here as well. So everything seems fine over here. I don't think we need to change anything except for this. I like to call it revenue. And you just double click and you will change the name. Everything else seems really good to me. And now, you know, when it comes to Power BI or data analysis or data warehouses, it's sometimes, sometimes in some cases, it's nice to have one big table and everything in that table, for example, for the customer name index. Instead of this customer name index, we could have these customer names actually and their emails in that table. Similarly, we could have these regions and city in that table. But in most of the data cases, when you talk about databases, it's nice to have these different lookup tables for optimization of you know, query performance. But when it comes to analysis, it's nice to have less tables, less lookup tables for performance of your uh, any BI tool. So right now I won't merge them. And now this will also teach you the concept of joins. But first, I want to explain to you something else. So that's why I'll just keep them this way. And let's just look once more. I just like to verify everything's all right. By the way, you can always come back to this. It's not like if you just close and you can't come back. You can always come back. 
Now let's just walk you through a few more things before going. So you have home. We never move from home. You also have transform. So in transform, you have so many different options like transpose, reverse uh, columns, use first header, row as header. So sometimes what happens is when you export data from Excel or any source, this order number, order date, all these things appear in the first row. And these will be called column one, column two, column three, column four. So if you ever encounter that situation, I want a problem, just use this. So I'll just show you how this works. So let's say I just use first row as headers now. These first rows have become the header, right? So sometimes you might not have proper structure on your, on your, on your uh, Excel sheets, and this might happen. Damn, what happened here? Promoted error. So then you have, uh, again, data types. You can pivot and pivot these columns. This is a very important concept, which we'll talk about in details in the next session. Your formats as well. So let me quickly explain you what each thing, thing means. So let's take this. So in format, you have uppercase, lowercase, and uppercase, each and every letter becomes uh, caps lock or capital. Similarly, in lowercase, each and every letter becomes lowercase. There's trim and there's clean. What's the diff difference between trim and clean? You can also hover and understand. What trim does is, let's say if you if your data source was not very clean, right? And in distributor, there's a space after distributor, which you can't see over here, or there's a space before distributor. You trim that data to make sure that there are no spaces before or after. Why is this so important? Because when you're mapping data from two different tables, right? So let's say you have distributor in one table and you've distributed in another table, you want to create a link between these columns. Now, in one of these tables in distributor has space at the end of it. Now you can't create a link because for Power BI or for any tool, distributor in fact has another character which is space. So these two things are not similar. To you, they look similar, but to any tool, they are not similar. There's also space at the end that's causing these issues or in, in terms of mapping. So this is what you do by format. There's extract, parse, all of these options you can always try. You can always run R and Python scripts as well. So there's so many options, and I just don't want to bore you with this. But you need to, after this session, you need to go and try all of these things. So close and apply. It will start loading. You see, it's, it's, it's going to load now. Now let's start creating everything, yeah? No. There's one more very important thing. Every time you load more than one tables, you need to go on this model view. So this pane has three options. There's report view, this table view, which is data view. You can just click and see each and every you know, different columns and uh, values in that table. You can add uh, measures and columns over here as well. And this is the model view. Now, what's, what's a data model? Now, we talked about we, 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 if you remember, we talked about, let me just delete these because sometimes there are some problems. We said that we have a customer table over here. So we have this customer index, right? And then we have this customer table, which has this index. But how would Power BI know these are related? It has no idea that these two are related. So you have to go and you have to create those relations over here. What happens when you don't create this? What happens is that, let me delete this. And sometimes Power BI creates wrong relations. So if you see, it has created a relation of index of products with index of regions. There's no link between that. But since the column names were the same, their values were in one, two, three for numeric, Power BI thought, well, there's a relation, but there's no, so just delete that. So you always have to come to this and understand the relationships. What I like to do is, I'd call this a fact table. I'll again explain to you what that is in the next session, and I'll give you some resources. And I like to call these dimension tables. So dimension table and fact table. A fact table has numerical values, right? And some, yeah, let's just keep it simple. It has numerical values. And now these dimension tables, they explain to you more about the fact tables. So for example, you say that customer index one, right, had made a sale of a purchase of, let's say, $1,000. Now, this dimension table will tell you more about that customer. Similarly, it will tell you more about the region. In this table, we had no region. We just had region um, identifier, which was index. So now, what are relationships? Let's take a step back. 
and let's talk about different kinds of relationships. So we have All right, ignore that. So let's let me explain your relationship in a very simple example. We have two tables. We have customers table and we have orders table. In customer tables, we have four customers: Aragon, son of Arathon. This is from Lord of the Rings. We have Jack Sparrow, we have Darth Vader, and we have John Wick. And you can see they have very unique customer IDs. There's no repeat repetition over here, right? And then we have orders table. We have unique order IDs. Order dates could be duplicates, and you can see customer IDs. We have some duplicates, which means that a particular customer can make multiple orders, right? Because of course they can. It's just it's just logical. So now we want to see what kind of relationship they have, and relationships are also called cardinality, which is a fancy term. You can ignore that. Just always use the relationships. So if you see here, Aragon, son of Arathon, is unique. And has made three purchases. So if you look at, if you just try to understand the relationship between these, you can see you can create this. Let's let's think of three imaginary lines: one, two, and three. So we can say the relationship is from one to many, right? This exactly is how we can explain uh, or illustrate it: is one to many relationship between the customers and the orders. We call this one to many. We also have one to one. Now, what is one to one? Let's say, I hope this is clear. So we also have one to one. Now, one to one means, uh, let me give you an example of a passport table. So in this passport, we have passport ID, when it was, until when it's valid, when it was issued, first name, last name, and country. So if Cristiano Ronaldo, we have Black Panther from Wakanda, we have Virat Kohli, and we have Imran Khan. I want to establish a relationship of one to one and to explain it to you. So let's say I want to divide this table into two. I just want to have passport details and the, the personal details, right? The, the name details. So now you can see passport ID in this case, and in this case, they only exist once, right? They're unique. So now the relationship between them is one to one. I hope this makes it very clear. There's also many to many, which we'll talk about probably in, in the next session, because I think it will get too much for this. I'll just repeat myself. So we have one to one, we have one to many, or many to one. Many to one is the same thing like this. Just turn it around. So one person, one person can buy multiple orders or can have multiple purchases, and multiple purchases could belong to one person. So that would be many to one. You just rotate that 180 degrees. That's it. That's the easiest way of explaining it. Now, why did I explain to you this? Because I want to talk about something very important. Let's just talk about this example. So I created a table. This is just to explain this. So I created three tables. I have a car produced table. Here we have car IDs, we have units produced, we have year, right? So car ID A, B, C, C, D, D, you can see we have multiple options. Then we have car sold. We have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D again. We have units sold, we have year. If car and you can see they have duplicates in car IDs, right? In both of these instances. And then we have car ID. A, B, C, D, and these these are colors. So this is unique. Right? So now if we go to and if we let's say create wait, is it many to many? It's not many to many. It's not many to many. But it is in fact many to many. Never mind. Press control G. So let's say you can see over here. So I've created this chart, this visual. It's a bar chart, a clustered bar chart from these two tables. So from first table, I have fetched car ID, which shows on the x-axis, and then units produced, which is the light blue on the y-axis. And then from the second table, which is car sold, I have tracked units sold into this unit in, 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 in this chart. So you can see dark blue. Now you can see this doesn't feel right. Because units sold, they all seem alike. Whereas units produced are fine. Why? Because units produced and the car category are both taken from the same table. So we don't really need to create a relationship between the same table, right? It's just one table. Similarly, in this case, if you've taken car ID and units sold from uh, this second unit car sold table, and you've taken units produced from 
cars produce table now you can see the units produced seem very weird it, it doesn't seem to change we know as for a fact that it's changing but units sold seem fine right again because they're taken from the same table you know why is that it is because power bi does not know the relationship between these it does not know what's related to what it does not know that this table is related to this table by any chance and that's why we have this model view to create relationships wait i think i'm on the wrong screen yeah stupid so now you can see we have cars id we have cars purchased and cars sold so let me try to map these just pick and drop and drag pick drag and drop it will give an error it won't give an error but it's saying we have a many to many relationship actually it is an error and that's because the unique column the unique identifier contains multiple values so it, it won't let me properly create that so what i'll do is i'll drag it from here to here and similarly id2 car id it should fix it now right because now we have created a relationship so we go here wow still not you know why let me go back if you have noticed there's there's an arrow over here what does it mean what is this arrow it tells about the direction of the filter or the direction of the relationship what it means is in very simple terms that cars id table is communicating with cars produce table because the direction is this but cars produce table cannot communicate to cars id table similarly it goes with these two but what we need to establish is we need relationship between these two right because we are taking two columns from here and one from here so that's why these both tables need to communicate with each other so what we'll do is we'll click double click on this and you see this cross filter direction and you can see there's many to one this one and then there's this many this asterisk means many so you click on both and you do that for both of these that's okay now you can see now we know that the information is or let's say the filter or the information is passing in both the directions right so now you see if you click here now you see it's, it's fine now it's showing perfect because now power bi knows there's a relationship between these and what is that what kind of relationship is that now i think this is clear so let's move back to our example where we were trying to create a relationship let's go so we have uh, you can, we have sales table right here so how is sales table related to customer so it, you just drag and drop to customer name index you drag and drop to delivery region index over here and the product description index over here they should all be one to many one to many and one to many let's go back to now let's start working so this is your report view you can see here you have so many options you have insert you have modeling you have uh, optimized the external tools let's forget that for now this is very important this is the visualization pane and this is called the filter pane so this visualization pane you can see all the charts over here so whatever chart you want to pick just hover and you will you will know the name of that so let's say we want to see line chart right this is just line chart so all you do you go to the test and you just drag and drop total unit price sorry revenue or if you don't want to drag and drop you can just click on this over here or you can just drag and drop over here now for revenue to show in the line of course there's something you need on the x-axis which is the date so here we have the date it has a hierarchy we can always uh, remove the hierarchy so hierarchy means it will show in terms of years and then quarter month and day i just want let's say for each and every day now what's the problem with this with having a day table over here sometimes let's say you let's you had a shipping table as well in that shipping table you had a shipping date and then you had a return table in that return table you had a return date so now these dates in so many tables 
it's always nice to have a common date table and then you connect that date table to all the tables in in the model view so how you can do this is you can go insert you can no in fact sorry you can go to home you can just uh, where is it yeah you can go to insert i have i just lost the plot over here apologies for this yeah sorry i keep forgetting so go to the new table right because we need a date table and you say date is equal to now power bi has paid uh, some some functions for data and calendar you call them calendar so i, I you have different so you have calendar calendar auto so i'd like calendar auto no sorry i'd like calendar so in calendar what it does is it gives you an option start date end date you can hard code them you can say start date is 1st january 2020 and end date is 31st december 2022 but there's another way a better one so since you have a sales table that has all the dates you you want to see all the dates which are from minimum to maximum in that table right so you type bin which is minimum of date till order date that's the starting date and you can see in power bi you can it always tells you what to enter next so it tells you this the, the smallest numeric value in a column or whatever you, you can just see the definition of that tax formula over here you need to press comma and now i'll talk about max of the date so max of the date and then okay so here we have a date wait a second i think there's some is to do with probably Yep, I think I missed. I oh, see. Yeah. I take it to detail. I missed. Uh, I missed a parenthesis over here. Now I need one more parenthesis over here, and now we're good. Yes. Yeah, so you can see in date. Now we have a date table. You can go to the table view or uh, data view, and you can see we have the date. Now in this view, you can also change the format of the date. So you drop. You go on the drop down. You have so many formats. These are for dates. So what I like is. I always like to keep a date, date, month, month, year, year, right? So I'll change the format. Here's one more way, the easy way, the better way, the more, let's say, expendable way. We talked about transform data, so you can just go to transform data. You can go to new source, click on blank query, right? And then I have created this this state table over here. So you can just control A, control C. I'll share this with you. And then you just paste it over here. No, sorry, you don't paste it over here. You click on Advanced Editor. Now it's open here. Control A, control V. Done. Now it's, it's asking you to enter the start and the end date. So I want to choose my data as let's say from 2014, I think. So I'll just choose 2014, January to 2017, I think. December. And what is this financial year start month? So different companies, different countries, they have different financial, uh, different months where they start counting their financial year from. So let's say it's it's July, invoke. So now it has, you see it has created this date table, which has date, year, quarter, month of year, day of month, and this is date integer. Then you, you have so many options. We have days, we have day in a week, we have week ending, week start, week starting, week number. So it always depends on what kind of analysis you want to do and what kind of you know graphs and charts you want to show. And this can really help you. So I'll just rename it date. Now ah, uh, there's always a date inside. So what you do is let's call it date underscore. Now, one more thing that I like to do is. I like to group these. So I, I like to right click and I'd like to move to a group, new group, date table. So all the date tables or just one date table will be here. 
then I'd like to group these into one more, which is these are in a part of the data model, right? So sorry, I just sent them to the date group. Move to group, new group, data model. Why I like to do this is it just makes it very easy for me to navigate in case I had 50 tables or 60 tables. What would I do in that case? So it would be much easier for me to have this proper categorization. So I just close and apply. And here we are. So, and I'm very uh, cautious of the time. Uh, we already, we already, we are already 45 minutes in, and these things take time. So I'll just try to wrap this up and take the rest in the next section, in the next session. But I'll just try to explain a few things to you here in terms of uh, the structure. So now that we have this. We have sales, we, we don't need this data anymore. So we'll just delete this. We'll go back to the model view and we'll connect this date table to order date. So order date, just drag and drop. Amazing, you can see it's also again one too many. And now we talked about bi-directional. So we, we it's, it's always case by case basis. We don't always want bi-directional filters. And especially in terms of date, we date try never to have a bi-directional filter because we have a thing which is called time intelligence functions. Now they get disrupted and there's a lot of issues in those functions if you use bi-directional filter in terms of date and in terms of date tables. Let's go back to the report where let's quickly create a, a few charts so that you don't feel you've wasted this session. All right, so now one thing is to just drop revenue to this chart. You can see it. there's another way, the better way and the right way. That's by creating measures. What's a measure? Measure is a calculation. So we just click on this table. We click on new measure. Right, so now what do you want to calculate? We said that the revenue is basically what? It's, it's basically a multiplication of these two, right? And there's some. Now, this is a little tricky part. Anyways, let me just walk you through revenue. Let me just call it total revenue because we already have a revenue column. Total revenue is equal to sum x. I'll tell you why sum x and why not sum. Sum x, what do we have here? We have order quantity. What is the table table? The sales table. I need now first you see it, it asks you to first select the table and then the expression. What is the expression? It's basically the formula or the condition that you want to evaluate. So what we'll do is we'll try we'll type uh, quantity multiplied by what should be total unit cost, no, not cost, sorry, unit price. Let me show you some, sorry, let me show you something interesting. I create a table. In this table, what I'll do is I'll just add, let's say order dates. This is the revenue that was already there. This is the revenue that I created. Now, Instead of this revenue as well, let's create a measure of this, right? So let's just go to um, new measure. Revenue two. Now, in the past, for example, we used sum x. Now we'll only use sum. And in sum, we'll just select the column, which would be revenue. So now you can clearly tell the difference. In some X, we chose to multiply two different columns. In some, we are only choosing one column. That's because some all some works on columns, whereas some X works on rows. Let me explain that to you. First, let me dra drag this over here, and let me delete this first revenue. And you can see that so this is some X, this is some. They're the same. 
But let me explain you to you a very important difference. So if you look at this sum, sum can only have one value, which is the column name. Now Power BI has two type of engines. It has aggregator engine, and it has uh, iterative engine. Aggregator engine just aggregates the entire row, whatever aggregation could be, sum, min, max, count, average, right? So it just aggregates the entire row, sorry, entire column, aggregator engine, and then we have iterative engine. So you saw we had some x, that wherever we have x, it means it's an iterative function. It will iterate and reiterate. So iterative function, what it does is, it works on each row. So let me explain that to you even in a better way. So we take all the quantity and we take unit price. And let me just drag this over here. So this, this column over here is some X. So what, what's it doing is, it's taking, it's multiplying these two. So for each and every row, it's multiplying 58 into 15,000. It's multiplying 109 into 31,000. It's multiplying these, all of these separately. So iterative engine or iterative functions, in this case, some X, it goes row by row, evaluates the expression. What was the expression? Expression was, quantity into unit price, it evaluates per row, and then in the end, it sums it. So when all the rows are evaluated, it reaches it reaches to the last row, that's when it sums that total. Whereas in sum, it just directly sums the entire column. And also in sum, you can't have multiple options, right? You can't multiply two different uh, columns to come to a new value. In sum x, you can. So that's a very important difference that you need to know. In this case, it doesn't matter much. We can take both, but uh, there would be cases where you would need. So for example, now that I have calculated quantity into unit price, I can go back and I can delete the revenue that I had created. You know, and, and, and this existed before, right? This is something that was a part of the data. I can delete it because I know it can be derived from these two, so I don't need it. Now, this is what we talked of is measure. Now, what is a calculated column? You can always go and you can right click and you can see a uh, new column, right? And you can apply the same formula in the column as well. So you can say, let's say, um, revenue column. And you can apply just the same formula, sum x. What the difference would be, this calculated column becomes a part of the data model over here. Now we calculated revenue and total revenue. You can't see them over here, right? Because they're measures. But when you created a column, you can see, which we didn't complete the formula because a uh, value of the time, it will become part of the model, which means it will take up space. So whenever you can avoid columns, I mean calculated columns, avoid them, unless it's absolutely necessary to be part of the model and there's no other way to calculate that particular scenario. So. We don't want to go with calculated, uh, calculated columns. So I'll just delete this. So now we know some, some X. But now where are the measures? I can't find them. They're here. What I like to do is I again like to organize. I'm an organized person. At least I like to think so. So I like to create a new table only for measures. So I go home, enter data, go to table, write measures. So, or you can call it key measures. Now it's gonna load, but you see, why is it called measures too, by the way? You know, in the data model, when we group these tables into different groups, we call one group measure. So let me rename this to underscore measure. Now you see there's already called this, this column. You can't delete this column. First, what you have to do is you have to take this measure you when you look click on the measure you see measure tools you see the home table click on the drop down and go to click on measures so now this measure has become a part of this measures table and similarly you go with this now you delete this so once you delete this you notice just notice the icon of the measures. The second is going to change. 
See, now this is only a measure stable. It becomes very easy when you have so many measures and you have so many different uh, formulas that you need to work on. So it becomes very easy when you want to drag and drop them. So I'll just delete this. I don't need this anymore. It was for explanation. Now comes the part of visualization. First thing first, it's the title or the, the whatever the title is. It's very important to name your reports, of course. So and also name it very explanatory. So sales performance report, for example. So control A, keep these little pegs. I like to keep at least 28. I like to keep them bold. And then you can always drag it to the center. You can change the colors from here, the font size, type, anything. No. Yeah, so sales performance report. This is where we should, I think, start in the next session. I'll just rename this as well. You can rename the tabs. I want to stop here because what we did right now is it, it takes, uh, you might not be able to read in all of this. Or maybe I'll just uh, show you how I like to do it because I don't want you to feel that you have not learned enough. So what I like to do is I always like to shout the big numbers, the main numbers on the face of the stakeholders. How do you do that? Use the discards. So for example, you click on this now this is the total revenue we'll we'll work on the design later so you have the total revenue here then what else could you have there's so many things you can have let's say total channels you can have total auto quantity you can have number of orders let's create that so now let's go to measures new measure i want to create i want to count total orders right how can i do that I can't sum them up because you know order was uh, alphanumeric field. So I need to count them because each row is a unique order. So I'll count um, ID, which I, I don't remember the name. It was called order number, order number. So now it's going to count all the rows for order number. And that is your total order. Uh, so what I, uh, total number of orders, so I control C, control V. And I like to just take this and try and drop it on top of this. So we had total orders. Oh, so I had an issue over here. I just uh, misspelled it, orders, orders. So you, you can also change the names here, by the way. For example, instead of total orders, we know we're talking about total, just make it orders. And instead of total revenue, you can just click over here, double click and make it just revenue, right? So we have total orders, we have total revenue. What else? What else, what else, what else? Mm, let's say total products. Again, we'll count the number of products. So how many products are we even selling? So we go new measure, we click on products, total products is equal to count product name, or even product ID. I'll just take product name because we should take product ID. I'm just trying to run through this. Again, I'll just like to control C, control V. Let's talk about total products. What else can we have? Do you want to have um, total product quantity or items, total number of items, let's say purchased? So let's go, let's say new measure total items. Now products and items are different. We have 15 products, but how many times each if and every of these products have been purchased? So total items is equal to count at sum. Because it's a number, so we, we are summing what? We are summing order quantity. Control C, again control C, control V. You see, you can see these double lines for alignment, which is amazing. So you always need to keep a line. So total items will be 68,000 total items sold. So I again, total items is fine. Total products also fine. 
now this looks so bland right i mean what are these colors and what's happening so you go here on this visual pane and here you have so many options so call out value is this number you click on this now what is the font you want to select i'd like to keep them bold and let's say these colors would depend on whatever your brand colors you have so for this let's say orange for example that doesn't look good yeah let's take it anyways and you can also you don't have to do them separately so you can control and click all of them and you can just select this make it bold you can change the size you can make them italics you can make them underline anything you want from here and then similarly for category label here it is this num this is text right so i like to keep it black maybe two sizes up yeah yeah, this looks nice to me. Uh, ignore the alignment. So yeah, this is what we can do. The second, there's also always general, which is the property. So you can always have, this is the size. You can always change the size here as well. So sometimes what happens is, let's say all these are different sizes. This is different. This is different. But you look really bad. And the position is also very different, right? Yeah, but so what I like to do is I select them all. It's important to, for, for your for your time. So let's say I want 150 by, if it looks too much, 125, 115 looks fine. And I want the width to be um, 250 is fine, all right. Let's say 240. And now that, now we know the sizes are the same. What about their position? So I'll go and I'll say, select the same vertical position. So I'll select 100. And now they're all aligned. That's what I like to do to keep them aligned, these, these uh, main numbers. So you can also, now if you click on this page anywhere, you can click on this again, uh, format, and you can select the size of the page. So you can go to canvas settings, and you can select also custom type. You can select four by three, or you can, when you can select custom, but since we started on, 69 that's uh, what i do most of the time and then canvas background you can add an image here or you could just change the color so let's say we want to make it a little colorful now one more interesting thing now you see your back has your, your page has colors now this looks so bad it's just, just white on top of that even this you go here you go to properties no, you don't go to properties, you go to effects, you click this off. If you turn this off, it becomes transparent. Or if you want, you can give it another color, which again, doesn't look so good. So I like to keep it off. Similarly for these, you could, what I like to do is I like to take the same color, but in a much, in a little different transparency, right? So this looks much better to me as compared to these. You also have an option to have outlines. So you again go to effects. You can have uh, this outline. I don't see outline. The shadows. The shadows. So you see now, this is the shadow. This sometimes look good. It gives a 3D effect. Doesn't good look all the time. So yeah, I'll do the same for all of these. And this effects background, I'll select orange and I'll select this transparency. Now, sometimes I like to keep shadows, sometimes I don't, depends on the mood. Now, here we have, here we don't, that's only for the contrast. So, this is what we have these high level numbers. So, let me just easy, uh, finish this real quick. Uh, in fact, let me just remove the shadow. I'm clicking everywhere but on the right place. I think I didn't I didn't rub my hands properly today. So when you rub your hands real fast, your hands become warm and then you are more efficient. Just something really stupid that I don't believe in. I'm just rambling. So now what we want to do is let's say we want to see sales per year. So I click on this and I select total revenue and then I select day and I just want to see years. So I just click on hierarchy and I click on year. Here we have it. 
right? So revenue by year, let's align this. And then what else do we need? Let's see revenue by product. So I'll, I'll select a bar chart, or let's see, we also call it horizontal chart, horizontal bar chart. So let me just, so now what you need to do is you need to see the revenue by product. So where are the products? This is the product table that I have, right? So I click on it and I look at the product name. It should be on the Y axis and the revenue should be, let's say on X axis. So total revenue. What happened over here? Something happened which I don't know what. You know what? I think it has to do with the relation that we have. Product name to have the relationship is between, yeah, again, so we don't have this two. I created the wrong relationship. You see product name with index. It needs to be indexed with index. So it index with index. Now you should be able to say it as a product name and then I select the revenue. Yes. You can see here revenue by product, revenue by product, and so on. You can create so many visuals which we'll talk in the next session, but let us just quickly try to uh, make them aesthetically nice. So let's just start with, uh, now see, now I press, I, I selected these two. It's not showing me how to, uh, that visual pin, why? They're different types of charts. So just select one chart at a time because they're different. So if you had 10 line charts, you can select all of them together, but now you have a line chart and a bar chart. So now just go here, general effects, background on, same color. What is the transparency? I don't even remember what it was. Let me just click here. 76%. So it's 76. Similar for this. All right. So now these bars as well, they need to change. So I'll go here. No, why would I go here? I'll go here. You can see these bars. You can change all these things, you know, by the way. And you can explore that over here. So go to bars. Let me just have the orange color. Oh, well, what looks good with orange? I'm not really good in colors. I mean, I'm, I'm not bad, but I'm not excellent. I'll just take orange itself, right? And similarly for this, you have line, line color, I'll take orange. Now one more thing, which is really important. There's a title, the XX title, Y axis title. Now see, it's so obvious that this chart is about revenue by product. And we can make it obvious by the title as well. So you can just go and you can say total revenue by product. It's so obvious. Let's have it in the center if you want, make it bold. So do we really need to tell that this is the revenue, this is the product? Is it not obvious? It is, so let's just go back to visual, go to Y axis. So you can turn Y axis off as a whole, which we don't want, we need to know what's on the, what which product has how much revenue. Just turn off the title. And similarly, we do the same for X-axis. We just turn off the title. Similarly here as well. Why? Because I like the charts very lean, clean, and without clutter. And just go here, click on title, bring it to the center, and make it bold. You can change whatever you want by you can change the title by just changing the text over here now you see you have this and it looks quite nice so now you can just click on this product and you can see these things change right why because it's dynamic it's interactive so we have created model which is really nice and all these numbers are changing so this product 12 had this revenue these many orders of course, it's just one product. It's total items now. Does it make sense to show that it's one product when we know it's one product? It doesn't, right? So there's this thing in format which is called interactions. So we go, you click on this chart, you edit the interaction. So 
what this means is if I click anything on this chart, how many tabs should be affected? How many other visuals should be affected? So I click on this. I don't want this visual to be affected. So I click on none. And then I click again. So now you can see everything will change except for that, which makes sense. Similarly, you can just click over here and you can see what happened in 2016. And now you see when you clicked on 2016, you can see the highlighted uh, revenue for the products. I don't like that. I like to keep it not highlighted, but filtered. So you can see the in highlight, the total bar remains the same, but then the dark color shows you for that selected filter. I like to keep it filtered like this. So for example, you click here, Wait a second, just give me, yeah. You click here, it's filtered. It's easier for the user to understand this. Now, when you're talking about easy, there's one thing also which is very hard. Sounds wrong. I made it awkward now, but there's two things. One, this color doesn't look good. You can change that again by going to Y axis. The color, let's keep it black or white. White looks uh, good with the, the backgrounds are much darker. Similarly for X axis too. Values. Black, you can change the sizes of them as well. But now see, to understand, now since we've removed all the X's, how do we, we have to hover to find each and every value, right? There's a thing which is called data labels. For that, if you turn this on, I can't sound so wrong. If you toggle this to on better now, you can see the labels here. So that's much easier now. Similarly for this, you can just toggle them on. And then I just like to amuse myself. And I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. You can change the color. Similarly, you can change the color over here. Also, one more interesting thing you can do is to this data label, you can have a background, which I like to keep sometimes. It looks nice. So for example, let me keep, just let me show you a negative color. So if you want to do something like this, or you have this dark orange, and then you want to have it white, you can have it. I mean, there's so many options that you can have. This looks really terrible, but you can still have it. So just an example of how many, the, the limits are endless for this, right? Similarly for this, you can have background now this this place looks very empty, so we'll just try to um, change this. Canvas settings. No, sorry, we where is the size? Ah, have I selected properly? Canvas settings. Yeah, custom. I'd like to remove uh, reduce the height. Maybe maybe make it five twenty. No, it's just too less. I'll make it six. Looks like maybe now 620. Yeah, it looks fine to me now. So this here is what we call a report. It's not a dashboard. It's a report. And I'll explain to you the difference in the next session. That's it, I think. And thank you so much for joining, everyone. And I think uh, for the next session, if you have any questions, please uh, drop them down in in drop them down in the comment section below. I'll answer them in the next session. We'll have it in next three, four days, and we'll take it from here. Again, you will see this recording on my profile. I'll share the data set with you. And until then, please just understand these uh, these functions and the data set, the databases, right? Because you need to understand, especially joins, because in the next session, we'll talk about joins in Power BI, and we'll talk about all these other uh, DAX functions as well. And before we move on, just one last thing. Uh, since I like to support all of you, second last thing, sorry. The next session is going to be Power BI episode two, in which we'll talk about more advanced tax, advanced data modeling, and we'll continue the same report. So if you want, I can share the same report with you as well, but I'd like you to do it yourself so you have some practice. And then we'll move on to next topics. Now, I'm really happy that if this helps even one of you, it will make me really happy. At the same time, uh, I also want your support in, in, in this. It's a, it's a brand that's coming up soon. So I want, I'll request all of you guys to uh, just scan this, go to Instagram, like and follow that and share that.
it would mean a lot to me. And that's it. And we are good for today. So thank you so much for joining your favorite, your new favorite, or your potentially new favorite data guy. Bye.